we worship. We worship the God for his holiness. It, it, is not, it is not a comfortable thought. The way we think even subconsciously about God's holiness will likely impact our worship on Sunday morning. Think of Isaiah when, who when he was brought into the presence of the Lord, he, he cried these words, woe. It, it, it is me. I'm lost. Or, or basically he was going to, or, or, or ruined, I'm undone. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. So, 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 so don't, don't walk in here like you're perfect. We we don't come in like we got it all together. We we come because we need God to get us together. And the more we have his word on the inside of us, and the more we worship him, and the more we honor him, and the more we give him respect, we're opening up ourselves for God to dwell in us. He says, says, I'm among a people of unclean lips. Or if John says in Revelation 117, who when he saw the Lord, he fell at his feet as though dead. Encounters with the holy God creates fear. R.C. Sproul says, our fear is not the healthy fear that the Bible encouraged us to have. Our fear is a fear Born of dread, that God is too great for us. He is too awesome. He makes difficult, watch this, he makes difficult demands on us. In his presence, we quake and tremble. Let me ask you this question. When was the last time you trembled at the presence of God? When when was the last time you fell on your face and and, and trembled at God's presence? Here it is. Here it is. Many times we come in worship, we come just having a casual encounter with God. I I know I'm going to churches and it's going to be about two hours. And so I'm going to go for two hours. And, uh, uh, And here's our thought. The choir better sing. Uh, they better sing the songs I want to hear. Because if they don't sing the songs I want to hear, I'm going to just sit there with my arms folded and I'm going to look at them. And um, and uh, the preacher, he, he better scream and holler. Because if he don't, I'm going to feel like I left out and I haven't been in the presence of, of God. But here's the question. It takes self-evaluation. What did you bring with you? You came seeking to get something. But the question is, what did you bring? He makes difficult demands on us. But thirdly, it produces a passion, desire to serve God. And fourthly, it produces a willingness to offend, unwillingness to offend him. Reverence for God is the motivating factor that moves a person to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and surrender their lives to his Lordship after they're saved. However, when one lives uh, carelessly, sinfully, indifferently towards God, it is a sign That they do not have proper respect for God or fear towards God. But but not only are we all to honor the sovereignty or respect the sovereignty of God. A proper respect for God will move us in our receptiveness of the word of God. A proper respect for God is not only important because it affects one's reverence before the sovereignty of God, but it also affects one's rev- uh, reverency 
to an attitude towards the word of God. Here it is. A proper respect for God will move one to have an appetite for the word of God. Over there in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1, it may be on the screen, and all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate, and they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord have commanded. Here, here, here is the problem. Here is the problem that I found uh, in this generation of church is that if the word doesn't fit our taste buds, we go around and around until we find something that is going to fit our appetite. Here, here is the problem with that. Here is the problem with it. Uh, it's, it's not that Nazarene is the only place that is preaching the word of God. Here is the problem. is We're, we're trying to find something that's going to fit our appetite. And the problem is we're normally not looking for places that is not serving healthy food. And what we wind up doing is we wind up going to get junk food instead of healthy food because we're trying to appease our appetite. But when we, are, when we are respecting God, we are respecting, watch this, here it is, the fullness of his word. Yes, 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 yes. Somebody say the fullness of his word. But not only will it give us our appetite, it will also move one to be attentive to the word of God. That, that A section of uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 2, and Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation. Verse 3, and he read therein, and the ears of all the people, watch this, were attentive unto the book of the law. It's fucking, and I've seen this uh, growing up um, in church, don't have it a lot here, but I've seen it growing up, it's funny, um, we don't move for the singing. If we out the door, if the, if the shout breaks out, we'll run back in to get it on, on, on the shout. Um, but then it seems like our attention span um, goes left when it's time to hear the word of God. All of a sudden, we got bladder problems, and we start itching, and start getting fidgety. I don't know, maybe just me. But 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 here's it. And he read therein, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Then there's a, another aspect here that a proper respect for God will move one to appropriate or to apply the word of God in their lives. Here in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 14 and they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded Moses that the children of Israel should dwell and boost in the feasts of the seven months. Then it jumps down to verse 17, and all the congregation of them that we come again out of the captivity made booths and set under the booths. And there was very great gladness. One, one who does not have a desire for and a heart to obey God's word does not have proper respect for God. You, 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 you come in and you get filled with the word of God. But what good is it to get filled with his word and never apply his word to your life? Can I, can I say it again? What, 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 is good, what good is it to come and get filled up with God's word and never apply his word to your life? 
Matter of fact, some of us that's been in church for long, you should have so much word in you that when the enemy begins to come up against you, you have enough power to begin to speak the word back to the enemy and let him know what dwells in you will, 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 will eventually come out of you. you. You can learn how to look at the enemy in his face and begin to tell him that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you, thou shalt condemn. You ought to be able to learn how to look at the adversary and say, I'm more than a cop through Jesus Christ. I, I can do all things through Christ. You ought to have enough word on the inside of you to be able to regurgitate it when troubles comes in your life. 